video, we went through a long free response question from a past AP Macroeconomics free response exam. We, we talked about strategies for success and how to approach the answers to the different questions included in that long FRQ. In this video, we're going to look at two short free response questions. Now remember, from the AP exam, there are three questions, one long and two short. On the short free response questions, you're expected to spend approximately 12.5 minutes per question. You have, in total, 50 minutes for the free response exam. 25 minutes is meant to be allocated for question one and 25 minutes for questions two and three. In this video, we're going to try to quickly go through questions two and three from past exams. So let's start by looking at question two. This one starts with the market for the loanable funds in a nation. The graph above shows the loanable funds market for a country. Assume that now the country's government increases deficit spending. Explain how the increase in deficit spending will affect the real interest rate. Now, in our previous example of the long FRQ, we actually had a very similar question. And just like in the previous question, the increase in deficit spending will lead to a decrease in the supply of loanable funds. The reason for that is that the government must raise the interest rate that it offers on its own bonds, which will attract savings away from the loanable funds market. So what we'll see is the supply of loanable funds decreasing, and this causes a higher equilibrium interest rate. This is again known as the crowding out effect. Go back and watch the video on the crowding out effect from our website if you have not already seen it. So the decrease in the supply of loanable funds causes the interest rate to increase. The little r stands for the real interest rate. So there's our explanation right, th right there. This is probably a two point question because it asks for the explanation. So the crowding out effect, once again, it appears on our exam. Let's look down at part B. Indicate how the real interest rate change you identified in part A will affect investment in plant and equipment. Now, how many points is this question worth? It's almost certainly worth only one point because the question says indicate. Investment in plant and equipment. This refers to private investment in the economy. And as we know, higher interest rates lead to a decrease in the demand for investment since investment demand is inversely related to the interest rate. Therefore, we can simply say that investment decreases. That's all we need to get our one point on this question. Investment spending will decrease when interest rates increase. Let's move on to part C. Explain how the real interest rate change you identified in part A will affect long-term economic growth. Now this question posed a challenge to my own AP Macro students. They didn't exactly see the connection between investment and long-run economic growth, but there is a very important connection between investment and long-run economic growth. So long-run ep economic growth refers to the increase in the output of the nation over a long period of time, and the main source of economic growth is the availability and the quality of land, labor, and capital. Now, which of these three will be affected when investment spending decreases? And the simple answer is that capital will decrease. In other words, there will be less capital in the economy over time as interest rates increase and the quantity of investment decreases. And if the capital stock diminishes over time, then over time, long run aggregate supply will decrease. And this means that economic growth will be slower or economic growth will not achieve the same potential that it would at higher levels of investment. So we can say that economic growth will slow down. And the reason for this is that because investment decreases, there will be less capital stock in the nation and therefore the growth rate will slow. Moving on to part D. Explain how the real interest rate change you identified in part A will affect each of the following in the foreign exchange market. So this one we also saw in a previous question. However, this time we're asked about how the demand for the country's currency will be affected. And the answer is similar to what I explained in the long free response question we did together above. Higher interest rates, real interest rates, will lead to an increase in demand for the country's currency, or for this country's currency. The reason for that is that more international savers will wish to acquire financial assets in this country. So there will be an inflow of financial capital. Interest rates 
refer to the return on investments and savings in this country's economy. Higher interest rates will make international investors wish to hold more of this country's currency because they will wish to invest in this country's economy. So that is our answer to part I. The demand will increase because there will be an inflow of financial capital. And II says the value of the country's currency, as we know, ceteris paribus, as the demand for anything increases, its price increases. Therefore, the price of a currency is the exchange rate, and the exchange rate will appreciate. So we can say it will appreciate. So that's it for question two right there. Let's look over the question once again and see how many points this one would have been worth. Part A for question two was most likely worth two points since it asked for an explanation. Part B was worth one point since there was no explanation needed. And part C was probably worth two points since it asked for an explanation. And part D asked for an explanation, but there was also two parts to this question. So this question may have been worth three points combined. Now this is just an estimate. I'm not sure exactly how many they are worth, but when I take practice questions, I like to estimate how many points each question is worth so that I know how much time and effort to put into answering each question. So we're going to do one more short free response question together to wrap up this exercise. Let's look at question three here. Country X has a flexible exchange rate and international capital mobility. We'll explain what that means in a moment. Political turmoil outside of country X generates a capital flow into country X. So now we're asked to draw a foreign exchange market graph. Capital mobility, what does that mean? This means that foreign exchange is allowed to be exchanged in this country. That means that foreign investors are allowed to buy assets in this country, including government bonds, including the country's currency, including stocks in cor corporations from that country. Capital mobility means that there is a free flow of financial investment in and out of this country. So what happens if there's political turmoil outside of country X? Well, it tells us that there will be a capital flow into the country. So we need to draw the market for country X's currency. Labels, exchange rate of country X's currency, the quantity, and I'm going to call it the dollar again, the supply of the dollar, and the demand for the dollar. Now, political turmoil abroad causes a capital inflow into country X. Foreigners wish to hold more of country X's assets, in other words. This will cause the demand for country X's currency to increase and the equilibrium exchange rate to rise and the quantity supplied by country X's residents to rise. So we have seen the currency appreciate as a result of the political turmoil abroad from our original equilibrium exchange rate and quantity to ER1 and Q1. So explain the impact of the capital inflow on the international value of the country's currency. We can explain it that the currency will appreciate because foreigners will demand more of country X's assets. That's what we mean by capital. So there's our answer to part A to this question. The demand increases, the currency appreciates. Now this is a very short FRQ as we can see. There's only two parts to it. The second part says explain the effect of the change in the international value of the currency in each of the following. So this is a very straightforward question relating to current account balance. As a country's currency appreciates, we expect to see exports decrease because, and this is a two-point question because it asks for an explanation, exports will decrease because goods from country X will be more expensive to foreign consumers. Therefore, they'll buy fewer goods from country X. On the other hand, import spending should increase. Capital M is the abbreviation for imports, and we need to explain this one as well. Import spending will increase because foreign goods will become cheaper to X's consumers. So a strong currency and appreciation of the currency may sound like a good thing for a nation's economy. However, as we can see here, the stronger a country's currency becomes, the less export revenue it will earn from the sale of its goods abroad and the more its consumers will spend on imports due to the fact that they appear cheaper now. So there's another practice free response question. Let's go through this one again and see how many points this may have been worth. I would suggest, I would say that part A to this question is worth at least three points. Reason being, 
it asks for a graph which must be drawn correctly and you must also explain what happens to the value of country X's currency. So that's probably a three point question. For part B, this one may be worth four points because you're asked to explain but then you're given two different things you have to explain. So you, you get two points for explaining that exports will decrease and two points for explaining that imports will increase. So this is a four point question. In total, this one's worth seven points. So that wraps up our second video lesson on how to succeed on the AP Macroeconomics Free Response Exam. Watch these lessons a couple of times. Take my advice. Try to determine how many points each part of a free response question is worth. Read the prompt carefully. If you are asked to explain, then it's going to be worth more points. If you are asked to indicate, it's probably only a one-point question. Do not attempt to explain something if you are only asked to indicate, because if your explanation is wrong, it may reduce your chance of getting the question right, even if you indicated the correct change. Thanks for watching. Go to my website, econclassroom.com, for more tips and videos and definitions and flashcards for studying for the macroeconomics exam.